Hey, welcome to the Two Hasbro's Toy Hunt Podcast, the show about collecting toys by collectors for collectors. As always, I'm your host, Gio. Joining me from all the way across town, my lifelong friend, George. How you doing, George? I'm doing good. How good? Pretty good. On a scale from 1 to 10. On a scale from uh, from Sony losing Spider-Man to 10. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Marvel losing Spider-Man to 10. From a scale of Sony taking back Spider-Man to Spider-Man being in, back in the MCU. Uh, f- six. <laughs> <laughs> so, George, what's new with you? Been a long time since we last uh, last had a conversation. Um, I got some uh, some stuff from the GameStop sale. Ooh. Uh, I got a I got a rose from Return of the Jedi, and I got a fin at a five below. Wait, wait. Uh, you got a rose from Return of the Jedi? Like an actual sorry. rose? Sorry, sorry. From the last Jedi. Did I say Return of the Jedi? Yes, he said Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I meant the last Jedi. I thought you meant like a plant. No, uh, Rose the character. I want to. I got them both because I want to. Cu- I already had the fin, but I wanted to customize the rose into a, into when that in, to recreate that scene with uh with uh with Phasma, where they're Which, being led to Phasma. Ah, okay, right. What other parts would you need? That's probably it. Just probably the fin body that has the the disguise and the little hat. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. And what are you gonna do with the fin head? I don't know. Probably give it to someone that needs it. Or you could stuck uh, stuff it in a drawer, and then if you ever need to customize again, use the face yeah. for something else. Yeah, although hopefully by that time there'll be new fin heads. Uh, with Ooh. the with the face scan. Yeah, I can't wait for those. What else did you get? Oh, I got a uh, Death Trooper from Rogue One. Also from GameStop or Five Below? Uh, from Walgreens. Oh, that's a, that's a pretty nice haul. I got the uh, Power Rangers Lightning Collection Mighty, Morph- Mighty Morphin Goldar from GameStop, a GameStop exclusive. But I don't know if you want to count it as me hunting for it because I had pre-ordered it. But I did go through a slight, uh, I did go through a... Convenience? Not inconvenience. Scare? (laughs) I would say panic. (laughs) (laughs) There was a slight panic. There was a slight moment of panic the day before. Because I got a phone call from them, but I was unable to take the call. Well, I, I missed the call, okay? And I don't have them, I don't have GameStop as a contact on my phone. And they're and famous for selling off the... They're famous, they're notorious, not famous, yeah. notorious <laughs> for selling off people's pre-orders. Yeah. And I started noticing that everybody was getting their Goldars, and a few posts were also saying that the GameStop had sold off their Goldars. So I started to panic, and I looked up the phone, the phone number from my history and then i looked up the gamestop that i pre-ordered it from their phone number and it was the same thing so but it was too late because i work overnight i couldn't call them back so i started to panic thinking they were going to sell it off (laughs) so i woke up the next day extra early you know I, i went on like four hours of sleep and I drove to the GameStop to check, but uh, everything was good. When I got there, I told the uh, employee that they had called me. Right away, she knew. She said, oh, it must be a pre-order. Looked up my number, and and here it is in my possession. Did you get a chance to see it yet? Yeah, I saw it. It's really nice, man. The uh, The box is the same box as your standard lightning collection figures except this one's all gold it has no white at all makes it look kind of elegant and i haven't opened the figure obviously i'll do that on uh there'll be an unboxing video but it comes with a set of wings the wings are uh 
detachable and attachable, obviously. He comes with a sword, a set of extra hands, and the build on the figure is nice. He's all gold. I don't know how accurate to the show it is because I don't remember. But this is probably probably the second best figure that has come out from this line so far after the Lord Zed. <laughs> And that's yeah, because all because all the Power Rangers are pretty much the same. Yes, the Power Rangers all look the same. Just probably the villains is where they're gonna shine. I can't wait till we get till we get a Rita, or a Scorpina, or that pig thing, the monster, or that spider thing too with the with the monocle. Yes, yes, I remember that. <laughs> you know what they need to give us. A Balkan skull. I really hope they give us a Balkan skull. I bet it's gonna be a uh, a bulk with a with a putty and then a skull with a buddy, a putty. Oh, that would suck. I mean, <laughs> no, that would Instead suck. Instead of a two pack. No, no, no. It's gotta be a two pack. I don't need to army build the putties. Well, no, but, no, I, but I know some you people. You know that's do. what they're gonna do. <laughs> but I guess if the majority of the collectors army build then okay it sucks i'll have to bite the bullet on it but someone like me i don't need to army build for example the multiple man from the marvel legends wave i only need one i don't need a whole bunch i just need one version of the character we can get some mirrors to uh (laughs) hey there you go but uh yes i hope they give us a bulk and skull no you know what i think they're gonna do actually I think they'll give us Bulk and Skull in two packs. But they're going to give... Because weren't they in a bunch of versions of the show? Yes. I think I think they've been throughout. The, they've probably been the ones that have uh, been in the most episodes. They're the C-3PO and R2-D2 of Power Rangers. Yes. <laughs> they'll probably just give us the different versions of it. You know, they'll just keep releasing them. I'd rather they do that. But as for Yeah, go ahead. They were probably even in space during the uh the one that takes place in space. <laughs> oh nice. Where there's like a space colony and that's the that's like the city. I really need to check this show out more. Because I stopped <laughs> watching. But as for purchases, that's it for me for this uh, for this week was just the Goldar. But speaking of purchases, as I'm sure you've heard, do you know what HasLab is? Yeah. The crowdfunding. Yes, it's uh, it's created by Hasbro to crowdfund toys that are too big to sell in stores. And they... They they set a goal, like if X amount of people put in the money for it or pre-order for them. I don't know if you have to put the money up front or you just have to like commit, like say, okay, I'm uh, you have to, to commit. You, ha- uh, they'll take it on the day on the deadline day. Okay. Okay. So you don't pay up front, but you are committed to paying. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, once they reach that, they give you a set time, a set date to, uh, to commit. And then if enough people have committed, they'll release the, the figure or well it's not always a figure right because uh they did really good with the java sail barge do you remember that from return of the jedi yeah yeah i wouldn't really call that a figure but they did uh phenomenal with that i think that there was no that was that one was overfunded wow i didn't hear about that and then they uh failed with the cookie monster that yeah. didn't uh, reach something yeah. like 16%. It, it was a life-sized cookie monster. Yeah, they reached uh, only somewhere. They only reached somewhere between 16 and 20% of the required backers. Uh, last time I checked, which has to be the the final number because it uh, yeah. when I checked, it was 624 out of 3,000. I think it has the percentages on the website. Oh, 
So that would be. Give me one quick second. 20%. 20% of the required backers. For the Cookie Monster? For the Cookie Monster, only 624. But, I mean, if you sit back and think about it, it's $300 for a plush toy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number one, I don't do lots of plush toys. But the few that I have, I would not pay. Let me put it to you this way. I would not pay $300 for a elf, for a life-sized elf plush. And you know I love me some elf. <laughs> uh, but it was it's it was supposed to be like a like a puppet, like a life-sized puppet of the Cookie Monster. Yeah, okay, that's fine. They could give me a life-sized elf puppet. I'm still not paying three hundred dollars. <laughs> True, but uh, I don't know. I think they probably went a little too big with that. So would you pay? Uh, would you pay six hundred for a giant transformer? I would not pay six hundred, but I would think about it if it costs five hundred and seventy-five dollars. <laughs> I think I know okay, where you're going with that. Sorry, one. yeah, it was. It's less <laughs> less than six hundred. It might as well be after taxes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've seen pictures of it, right? We're talking about the Unicron, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, I've seen pictures of it. Uh, it's it's gigantic. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a uh, Transformers fan, but goddamn, it it looks cool. It looks impressive. I forgot how much it weighs. It weighs a lot. Really. Yeah. So you not only have to have real estate, but the real estate you have has to be able to support the weight. Some weight, yeah. Wow. 19 pounds, I think it was. Wow, 19 pounds. I don't even think I have that amount of pounds of uh, legends on my shelf. <laughs> but the uh, the deadline was extended, correct? Yes, they uh, apparently they didn't, or a few days before the deadline, they uh, extended it, um, which makes me think like if you're gonna be extending deadline, I mean not that I don't wouldn't want to see this thing get made. I'm sure there's people that want it. I mean not me, but I'm sure there's people that want it. But uh, if you're gonna be extending deadlines, then why have them? Well. I have a theory on why they extended it, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, Maybe they're pretty close. Maybe they see that it's gaining some momentum, or maybe by the time the deadline was was coming up, it was starting to gain more momentum, so they were like, wait, let's give them a little more time. Yeah, it it was over half, I think, by the time the the deadline was going to hit, and they extended it. Mm. Yeah, so the deadline was extended to October 6th, so... I think it should just be like an open-ended thing, and if if they eventually get to eight thousand or whatever, then they make it. Because if not, then they're gonna lose all the, I guess, all the work they put in for like designing it. They'd have to be really careful and not announce too many Haslab projects, and and then end up with too many open items. Why? Well, say this one uh, doesn't reach it until after a year or so and in that year they've already announced a couple of more things and you know the few uh, uh, one or two of those things same issue people just i don't know i think they'd end up with too many back projects do you think uh one project would take away money from another is that why they wouldn't want to do it yes i don't think hasbro is i mean i'm sure it's a pretty big company but it's not they don't have that many it's the world's biggest toy company by yes, the way, but, but they don't have that many people just sitting around waiting for a new project. I I don't know. I I assume all the work. I I mean I don't know how how toy designing goes, but I'm pretty sure they're done designing it and they're just like waiting on to make the call, is aren't they? Of sending the of of having the factory start making the parts. Yeah, yeah. But, like, well, it was like you're saying, uh, well, like we were saying, 
the last time I checked, which was four days ago, it was up to 5,455 out of 8,000 needed. Ago? Like four. Okay, it's it's up to 500. I mean, sorry, 5,600 something. Nice. Yeah, okay. So it was at 5455, and they need 8,000, so they'll get it. They'll get it by October 6th. They, they plan to announce the results at New York Comic Con. Do you know when New York Comic Con is? Because that is not something. Didn't that already happen? Did it? I think so. Didn't it? Oh, then. I don't know. Maybe the New York Toy Show you're thinking of? Uh, I don't know. I don't no, know. No, the article I read said New York Comic Con. Oh, that was probably pre deadline. Yeah, possibly. Now, uh, the what do you call this? Do you call this a figure? Do you call this a project? Should we just call it by its name, Unicron? <laughs> I don't know. It's so huge. <laughs> Ru- ruler of the planet Unicron Percy I eight. <laughs> it comes with an interchangeable chin. Did you know that? No. And an in scale mini Galvatron to reenact uh, their movie interactions. When he eats them? I'm assuming. <laughs> Do you know anything about Unitro- uh, Unitro- Unicron? Uh, no, besides him being the villain in the Transformers movie, no. <clears throat> All right, well, here's a little... Uh, here's a couple of... Uh, well, disclaimer. Uh, neither George or myself are Transformers fans. We don't collect Transformers. I never really watched the show. Uh, I, s- I watched I watched the uh, Beast Wars, which was a Transformers uh, like spinoff, mm-hmm. where they transformed into animals. Oh, nice! And the bad guys transformed into dinosaurs. Yeah, I can see why you watched it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and my favorite character was a was a raptor uh, that switched sides from the bad guys to the good guys. Ooh, he was the the Darth Revan of the Transformers, of the Beast Wars. Is that what it's called, Beast Wars? Yeah. Of the Beast Wars. Okay, so, uh, well, Unicron was introduced. He was introduced in the 1986 Transformers movie called Transformers the Movie. And uh, when he... <sighs> His proportions are planetary, like the size of a planet. He tr- actually transforms into Planet X or Planet 10. I'm assuming it's Planet X because Planet 10 just doesn't sound. Do you think? Do you, uh, yeah, it, it looks to me like the they don't uh, they don't keep to scale very well yeah. with their uh, Transformers stuff. <laughs> He devours realities, man. He's Galactus. Galactus devours planets. This guy devours realities. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's uh, he's either a god of chaos or simply a large robot. <laughs> no, really. That's because, uh, you know, I had to look up who the heck this guy was. And those are two of the uh, things it says. Yeah, he's simply a large robot or uh, a a god of chaos who devours realities. So it's safe to say you've never seen the Transformers movie, right? No. Well, it's based on the uh, television cartoon show, which, and here comes my theory about why they extended it. Did you know that the show was based on the toy line created by Hasbro? Uh, yeah, uh, it was, uh, they specifically did it, they specifically made the TV show in order to sell the toy line. It's I know their, that. It's their baby. This is their baby. Of course they're going to extend the deadline, dude. They cannot afford to have failure next to their the like, name. flagship character. Exactly. They cannot <laughs> afford failure with Transformers. Yeah. Also, the uh, the Hasbro CEO has a uh, has producer credits in the Transformers movies. Wow. Transformers Ooh. movies. Uh, do you know 
how well they did in terms of uh, like Rotten Tomatoes ratings wise? I don't know. I I know I stopped after the second one because I hated it. I walked out of the second one. <laughs> but but I'm sure. But I think uh, I think uh, Transformers fans also don't like it because it's not very like faithful to the show. It was one giant commercial. A car commercial too, not even a toy commercial. <laughs> yeah, it was a giant commercial. I I did not like it. The number one, I didn't like the humor. Number two, it was just product placement everywhere. And I was a bunch like, of shots. A, a bunch of shots of the Chevy logo. Yes. Of the cars. Yes. I didn't like it. <laughs> like it. The original movie, we actually uh, uh, we just passed the well, not just a month ago, uh, as of time of recording, it was released in 1986, August 8th. So the anniversary just passed not that long ago, when it was released in North America. Nice. And this is the movie that traumatized uh, an entire generation, right? From what you were telling me. Ah, uh, yes, because uh, apparently Hasbro wanted to sell uh, to to make new toys, new Transformers toys. So what they did was kill off the uh, kill off all the uh, original Transformers. In even Optimus Prime? Uh, yes, even Optimus Prime. Not Optimus. <laughs> I hear he died pretty early in the movie, too. I think they all did. Wow. They all died pretty early in the movie. It's like if the uh-huh. snap had happened right at the beginning. <laughs> yes, but in that case, the snap happens and you just get a whole bunch of new characters. And I think the outcry, the outcry had to... Uh, they brought him back eventually because because of uh, how upset people were. Yeah, because of how yeah they got. And you had to be really upset back then because like now yeah nowadays, now there's internet yeah you just do it on the spot and sometimes you say things in the heat of the moment that you don't mean. So in order for this uh, for these people to be upset, you know they were mad because they finished the movie, drove home. You know, probably went to sleep if it was a late movie. They woke up and then wrote the letter. <laughs> but I think I, from what I hear, I don't know. Uh, it seems like the Transformers movie is remembered fondly by Transformers fans. Yeah, now. Like Zoolander. Do you remember how shitty Zoolander was? And now all of a sudden it's a cult classic? How did that happen? I I never saw Zoolander. Do yourself a favor, George, and never see it. <laughs> it's bad but yeah uh, I mean look uh, did you know it lost money Hasbro actually lost money on and, the movie yes they, it lost a combined 10 million US dollars because of the per- the poor performance of this movie and of uh, My Little Pony oh I didn't know that yeah and on Rotten Tomatoes it only has a 58% positive reviews so you know I guess Transformers movies don't tend to be that good. <laughs> no, hey, 58, I guess, is better than average, no? Yeah, I guess slightly better. But, you know, if you're a Transformers fan and and you need the devourer, the devourer of realities, a 19-pound version, it's got to look it's got to look impressive. Right? And it's over it's over two feet tall, too. Yeah, it's got to be impressive when you transform it into the planet. If if you need this in your collection, you have until October 6th to commit to buying it. And if I were a fan and I can afford this, who am I kidding? I probably still wouldn't do it because I don't have the space. But <laughs> if you do have the space and you love the show and, and the characters, October 6th, you've been warned. Did uh did you ever see reviews and stuff of the barge of the Haslab barge? No, no, I never saw reviews on YouTube. I knew about it. I knew they reached it uh, because uh, a couple of YouTubers that I watch talked about it and talked about wanting to get it, but I never actually saw a review. Oh man, 
Dude, you should you should watch a review. Really? It, it makes me well. I'm not gonna get it because it's not even to the. I mean, first of all, it's way expensive. Uh, I I forgot how much it was initially. Uh, it, I think it was like, like 500 initially, and afterwards, it's uh like immediately after the uh people got it, it went up. They started selling them for like 1500. Wow. Yeah. But you can only get it now through uh through people that already have it. Secondary market. Yeah. Okay. So it'll cost one. It costs a ton, way more than what it cost back then. Two, it's not to my scale, and three, it's not something that I might have gotten had I collected that scale. But god damn, is it nice, dude? Well, you, maybe you can send me a link of a review. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll send you one. Or um, I could just not be lazy and look it up. <laughs> I mean, either or. And and I was watching uh, this uh, this one. Uh, reviewer of uh of toys that i watch uh called uh talker art uh he was saying that because uh, the uh the barge came with a it came with a with like a three and a quarter three and three quarters inch uh, action figure of some character called yak face at it I've, I've never heard of him i've heard the name i don't know who he is yeah i, I don't know who he is either i think he's from return of the jedi i mean he's gotta be Has but to uh be. And I'm um, sure he was in that scene. Probably, yeah. God damn, they all have names, too. Have you heard of it, Max Rebo? No. <laughs> Who's he? He's like this like little elephant that uh, plays the piano in that okay. scene. Okay, I know who you're talking about. Okay, so so this thing came with a uh, came with like this little coin, and he said that he sold that. For three hundred dollars, that that one, because because Hasbro released another one, but without like the little collector's coin or whatever. Uh, so he got another another one that was like normal price, and he sold that one for three hundred dollars. So so the barge for him was two hundred dollars. Wow. Three hundred dollars for a coin. Well, for an action figure with a with a coin. Still. I've got uh, 12 figures that I'm trying to sell for 400, and I can't move them. <laughs> this guy sold a coin and a figure. <laughs> hey, props to him. I mean, if someone out there is willing to pay for it, you take yeah. that. It makes me wanna want at least a. Uh, do you remember those little boats they were riding them? They were riding on during the barge scene. Yes. I want one of those now. Do they make them? Have they been uh, made? Not probably not at six inch scale, which uh, is what I would want them at. Uh, well, you know that talking about the barge is an excellent segue to uh, to the next item I want to talk to you about. Since we're talking about massive Star Wars scales, <gasps> so Lego Star Wars is releasing the Imperial Star Destroyer. I read it on. Uh, a uh, Mashable article. It was announced on the 4th of September. It's 4,784 pieces. How big is it? Like length-wise? It is 43 inches long, 26 inches wide, and 17 Jesus. inches high. I think that's as big as a freaking barge, dude. <laughs> It's nicknamed the Devastator. Uh, tell, tell me again what it was called. The what? The Imperial Star Destroyer. Or uh, the Devastator. Which one's that one? Is that is that uh, Darth Vader's? I ship? believe it's from the opening scene. Yeah, because it's from A New Hope. Oh, okay. And it's the third No, largest... I was thinking of the uh, Executor. or No, I, I don't know which one. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Continue. I wouldn't know the names of like those nicknames, and I know a Tie Fighter, I know uh, an X-wing, the Millennium Falcon, and that's about it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's the third largest Lego Star Wars set ever produced. I don't know what's ahead of it, but it's the third largest. Probably one of the probably one of them is the uh, Death Star. Most likely. 
it's uh, it's going to retail at 699 US dollars. 699. That's $700, over $700 when it's all said and done. Holy crap. It's more than the Unicron. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, going to be it's going to be on sale and online starting uh, October 1st. But if you're a Lego VIP member, you can get it by September 18th. Are you a Lego VIP member, George? And do you have $700 to spare? Uh, neither. <laughs> you can uh, you can either send them 699 US dollars or 35 Marvel Legends or Black Series figures. I ran the math. <laughs> Would they accept that? <laughs> they should. Uh, it's going to have swiveling guns, a movable radar dish, a hinged engine exhaust, two blaster pistols, uh, two Imperial crew member minifigs, a display stand with... Oh, man, uh, this thing has to have a lot of minifigs. Why, why is it... Such- Right? I agree with you 100%. A display stand with an informational plaque and a buildable, attachable Rebels Tentative 4 Starship. I don't Do know you, what that one is. Yeah, I was about to ask you, is it from the show Rebels or is it from the Rebels? It's probably that... Uh... No, is it is it like one of Leia's ships? Probably. Do you remember the one in the New Hope where they're uh, well, the they're opening, trying to run the the yeah. opening scene? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if it's if it's the Star Destroyer from the opening scene, tell me the name again. The name of the uh, the Star Destroyer, the Imperial Star Destroyer. It's also named the Devastator. I wish I had Neil deGrasse Tyson's voice when I say the Devastator. The Devastator. <laughs> nah, I can't make his voice. <laughs> Are you looking it up as we speak? Yeah. Well, while you do that, let me also let our listeners know that up for pre-order yeah. now. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's the uh, it's Leia's uh, ship, the one that she's getting away on. It has to be. I mean, it would make the most sense. Yeah, it's small. It's it's made of little. Uh... Well, in comparison to the to the uh, Star Destroyer. How long do you think it would take to build that thing, to put it together? I don't know. Do you think it would be a little bit faster? Because, you know, one of the first steps when you're putting together a Lego set is to uh, bunch all the colors together. And this is probably going to be one giant gray. How long did it take you to build the Simpsons uh the Simpsons house. house? Three yeah. days. <laughs> How many pieces? 2,523 pieces. Took me three days. Um, and and the, Star Destro- and the Star Destroyer? The Star Destroyer doubled it. It's going to be 4,784. A little, yeah, so a little I'm, less. A little over half. So a little over devil what it took you. <laughs> well, so but we... okay, all right. Let me let me defend my my slowness here. Number one, I only dedicated a few hours, like a couple of hours, to doing it. I, I you started with me. I don't know if you recall. We started yeah, building yeah. it together. And uh, it's the first Lego set I've ever messed with. It's the only Lego set I've ever messed with. Oh really? Yes. Uh-huh. And I was watching The Simpsons. I had a TV. I had a Blu-ray player. I was watching the seasons. So, you know, I was taking long breaks. But, yeah, three days. Now, if you had the the money, would you get this? No. <laughs> yeah, me either. I. How long would it take me to build it? How long would it would it take you to work to build it? Yeah. <laughs> to work to afford 
it's a good a chance to build it. I mean, <laughs> to be able to throw away how much did I say it was gonna be? Seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars and throw away money. I don't know because I I don't buy thirty five uh black series or uh, Marvel Legends at a time. Yeah, yeah. I've really got to work my way up to that. But hey, you're a Lego fan. You're a Star Wars fan. I'm pretty sure almost everybody out there is a Star Wars fan. Seven hundred dollars. Go get you a uh, an Imperial Star Destroyer and put pictures up on our on our Twitter accounts because it would be uh, it would be nice because I don't want to buy it, but I definitely want to see it. If you're a YouTuber out there, make one of those videos where you time lapse it of you building it. I once saw somebody do a time lapse video of them building the Titanic, and that thing was impressive. Oh, yeah? And speaking of Star Wars, up for pre order now, you can get the six inch Black Series Red Sith Trooper from Rise of Skywalker. Comes with two blasters. Uh, I'm. I'm assuming this is the same figure from the San Diego Comic-Con. Just this will be the regular version in the regular Black Series box. I also saw... Well, before I get to the next thing I saw, is this going to be something on your list? Or are you going to reserve judgment until after you've seen the movie? Yeah, I'm going to wait until the movie comes out and see. You know, I, I, I tend to do that. And and to my detriment, I did that with Hella. <laughs> I almost didn't find a Hella. Yeah. I guess maybe it would have been for the best because now I would have just gotten the the new one without having gotten the old one too. Yeah, I want the new one too. This old the old one is nice, but the new one looks better. I think I want it simply for how it looks, the Sith Trooper, because. You know, Boba Fett wasn't really in the movie a lot, but I like the look of the figure, of the character, so I got the figure. Same with Phasma. She wasn't, like, a big player. I still got a Phasma figure. Yeah, well, I'm so disappointed with uh, with Phasma not being better. Hey. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, she she was good in that, like, Finn's arc was, uh, I like that, like, when he beats Phasma and, like, I guess kills her. I don't, I don't know. No one's ever really dead in Star Wars, but uh, I, I, in that I guess it was good. But her as as a character was not was not that good. You are adding fluid to the flames, George, because you know Star Wars fans love to hate Star Wars. <laughs> I'm not hating. Hey, I like I like the Last Jedi. Yeah, but you're you're giving them reason to hate more things. <laughs> Let's, let's let's shy away from that because wait wait which one of us didn't like the last Jedi? <laughs> by process of elimination you're adding flames to the fire dude <laughs> by process of elimination it was me but i don't hate it to the point where i want to rant about it or like you know hate everything about it it was a movie it was what it was oh well so <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's also going to be a Star Wars Archive Collection Archive Edition book. It's a detailed visual archive of Hasbro's most popular lines of the three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures. It's going to be 300 pages covering the vintage collection figures, creatures, vehicles, and playsets. And, you know, each. Uh, each figure, playset, creature, etc., is gonna it's gonna be like its own page or its own couple of pages with a detailed record of each item, and you know with like high resolution pictures of it. So it's a glorified photo album of all their action figures. Wait, 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 wait. How how much will this cost? Oh. They're gonna sell this? Yes, they're going to sell this. Give me one second. Wait, wait. So they're so they're gonna sell you their advertisement. They are gonna sell. They're gonna sell us pictures of their toys. Yes. No, no, no. Advertisement. It's like uh, when you were a kid. Did you ever get like the Toys R Us 
uh, catalogs? Like Christmas catalog? Yeah. Of course. I still have some. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, you know, you waited around for that, you know, but they gave those away for free because they knew, you know, kids want them. They want to see them. They want to see what the fuck is out there. Well, yeah, but. Well, no, I shouldn't say but. I'm not defending what they're doing. But they want us to look at it more as, you know, how Marvel sells you those books that talks about each villain and each hero. Sure, but that's different. How is it different? Because they're talking about characters and stuff. They're not they're not selling you. It's like it's like when you when you watch a movie trailer, but before before YouTube plays you the freaking movie trailer, they they play you another fucking ad. <laughs> it's like they're selling you the advertisement. Yeah, basically. Hey, but you they're smart. They know Star Wars fans, collectors, Star Wars collectors, completionists. They're going to go out and buy it, dude. They know I want to get it. <laughs> Are they going to sell it at stores? You're going to want to get it. I'm, I kind of want it, but it really depends on the price. If it's like five bucks, maybe. No more than that. We both know that it is not going to be. Fuck. <laughs> five bucks. Oh, apparently it's a Kickstarter? By Blue Milk? 1,888 backers pledged. To Wait, help this, this isn't. Hasbro isn't doing this? Apparently not. Oh. Well, I guess then it's different then. You're still some... buying advertisement for Hasbro. <laughs> it's sort of. It's like they're making a fan trailer, I guess. That's what yeah. the equivalent. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. I would uh, definitely want to see it. So if you buy it, I want to see it. I would yeah, buy this yeah. if it were Marvel Legends, no lie. There's a yeah, and there's a lot more to keep track of too with Marvel Legends. So it'd be a lot more useful. Is there? Least. Huh? Is there? What do you mean is there? There we're talking about Star Wars entire three and three quarter oh, inch. I thought you said black series. No, 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 no. So the archive of this no, no. Holy That's, shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Three and three quarter inch figures. I'm sure there is a lot more of that than there is Marvel Legends. Oh yeah. Oh so, yeah. Big news, you know, it's a, it's exciting times to be a Star Wars fan. You've got the Lego sets, you've got the Sith Trooper if you were able to pick it up at SDCC, if not you can pre-order it now. You've got this book. Man, I wish I were a hardcore Star Wars fan. <laughs> Would you consider yourself a hardcore Star Wars fan? I, it seems that I'm more hardcore than most people, I guess, but I don't know what you'd consider, a, what you'd consider that. You've read the books, you know the stories, you know the planets. I haven't read any books. I think uh, you were going to let me borrow the one about uh, Darth Plagueis. Ooh, the Darth Plagueis book, yeah. I have the audio version. The audiobook version. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, we'll download it. and uh, I would say you no, really like just... Star Wars, but not as much as people that truly love Star Wars. <laughs> Depends on how you measure, on okay. how you measure that, I guess. I don't oh, know. Okay, let me give you an example. Um, about three years ago, maybe four, uh, I watched wrestling. I would still watch wrestling, you know, and I liked it. I would watch it with my kids. I grew up watching wrestling. And one of my childhood friends invited me to join a Facebook group about wrestling. And after about a week of seeing what the stuff these people were posting and, you know, keeping track of how many times each each person posted, turns out I didn't like wrestling. They <laughs> liked wrestling. <laughs> Star Wars, I don't think you're as into Star Wars as other people. You collect Black Series. You don't have Black Series, uh, three and three quarter inch Black Series collection, the old school Star Wars collections, the Power of the Force collections, the all that stuff. 
I would collect those if the price was uh, because I saw I saw some uh, three and three quarters inch uh, I think ro- some Rogue One uh, stuff and oh actually I actually do have some Rogue One three and three quarters inch because uh, I wanted a uh, I wanted a Sagrera but there's not a Black Series one yet. <laughs> but that's the thing you're saying I would if. Yes, yes, I I would if. The price wasn't so freaking similar. I think it was like 13 bucks for a three and three quarters inch, uh, and it looked really good. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it was like 13 bucks for a uh, Snoke, and I'm like, well, for a few more bucks, I can get the the six inch. So, may as well collect that. Yes, but what I'm saying is the hardcores. There's no if. <laughs> They're gonna go out and get this stuff. <laughs> True. <laughs> So, yeah, that's how I would measure. That's how I measure. Because, you know, I really like Star Wars, too. I've seen the movies. But we also times. shouldn't we also shouldn't measure by money. How much? You no, know. I'm not. I'm not measuring by money. I'm measuring by desire. Yeah, but you're measuring the, the desire by how much they go out and get the three and three quarters inch or, or any action figure. How many times have you seen each Star Wars movie? Would, I would, don't know. I could tell you. Okay, would you say that you've seen the Star Wars movies as many times as the guy from uh, Star Wars Theory? I don't know what that is. Uh, the guy that made the the Darth Vader fan film? Yeah. Probably not. Okay, there you go. There's your answer, my friend. <laughs> I'm sorry. But by pro- that by that metric, I'm the biggest Jurassic Park fan there ever was. And I'm and I kind of don't consider myself that. I do. <laughs> I consider you a very big Jurassic Park fan. <laughs> More than I would I would uh when I was a kid, I'd I'd watch it, I'd rewind the tape, I'd watch it again. <laughs> I For would weeks on end. I would go as far as to say you're a bigger Jurassic Park fan than you are a Jeff Goldblum fan. And that is hard to say. Because everybody loves Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> I would say that, actually, yeah. <laughs> that I'm a bigger Jurassic Park fan than a Jeff uh, Goldblum fan. Uh, good times talking about Star Wars. I cannot wait until the new movie comes out and we get to sit down and do our, uh, do our movie review of it. I think for that one, a couple of things should happen. Number one, we should watch the premiere. Well, not the premiere, but the first time we see the movie, we should go together. And number two, that episode should be filmed with us in the same room. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of planning on being disappointed by it. (laughs) I am expecting to like it. Just judging on, uh, basing, basing that on, how it's happened in the past. What do you mean? Uh, when I expect to really like the movie, it turns out it's not that good. And when I expect to, the movie to not... When I have no expectation for the movie, it turns out really good. <laughs> what did you expect from The Last Jedi? I was expecting it to be as good as The Force Awakens. To start answering questions and, you know... Filling in those gaps that uh, that the last movie left. <laughs> well, and, and it did in a way, but it was a bit disappointing. It just felt so quick. Like it was just being glossed over. Like Ray's parents, nobody, boom. Snoke, dead, boom. Just, I don't know. That's, I found that. My, more my expectations for it were, uh, were, were very, very low when Josh was the first one of us to see it. And he came back with, like, it really sucks, dude. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't even have that big an issue with the fact that they killed off Snoke. I didn't ha- Well, yes, I did. With that, I kind of did. I didn't have a big issue with Ray's parents being nobody. I like that. I Yeah, I like that. I just didn't. What it made me feel was, like, then why build it up so much in the last fucking movie? That's, that's what J.J. Abrams does. And that's why I hate Transformers. <laughs> Why? Because of J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams was not uh, Transformers. It wasn't. No. 
Okay, then let me uh, rephrase it. And that's Thinking why about I hate... Michael Bay. And that's why I hate the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, that wasn't him either. That was also <laughs> Michael Bay. That's why I hated Lost. Did you really? Well, no, I hated the last, the uh, the final part of it. <laughs> that's why I'm gonna hate the Last Jedi. <laughs> I think you're gonna like the Last Jedi because you're going in there with low expectations. Oh, sorry, not the Last Jedi, the uh, Rise of Skywalker. I think you're going to like the Rise of Skywalker because you're going in with zero expectation and so on. No, you're actually going in expecting to hate it. I'm going in with zero expectation. I'm going in there just going, hey, surprise me. <laughs> actually, uh, I was going in with with low expectations for Captain Marvel, but then I, but then I thought, well, maybe if I go in with low expectations, uh, I'm actually going to be like pleasantly surprised. So then I my expectation switched to pleasantly surprised, but because of that, I came out mildly disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> now, George, that's that for Star Wars. There's something I got to talk to you about. There's, there's a little thing I have to confess to you. Funko Pops. You know I'm not a big Funko Pop guy. You know I want the the Kool-Aid man, but they reeled me in, man. They reeled me in good. <laughs> I think everybody says, I'm not a Funko guy, Pop guy, but, but. Well, okay, they're reeling me in. They are reeling me in. I'm afraid. I'm afraid for me. <laughs> I'm afraid that if I start buying these things that I really want, then I'm just going to go berserk with the rest. So... Have you seen the Treehouse of Horror Simpsons uh, Funko Pops? Yeah, yeah. Tell me that you don't want those. Tell me with a straight face. <laughs> I want those. <laughs> okay, so these Treehouse of Horror Pops, uh, they have Ape Homer or King Homer. It's from the King Kong's uh, parody that they did. Marge. Marge. And he has a little Marge, right? He's holding a little Marge. Yes, he's holding a little Marge in his hands. That's that's it's cool. And he's gray, so it looks like it's in that black and white style. Yeah, yeah. There's a Marge from the island of Dr. Hibbert. Where she's an animal? Yes, she's some type of cat. Feline creature. I don't know what it is, a panther or I don't know what she is. Uh, she's probably the weakest looking one from the set, but it's Simpsons and I have to have it. There is also Lisa, where she's like a devil. She's got hooves, uh, the devil tail, some wings, horns. I don't know what that's from. I don't know what episode that's from. Do you? Uh, I think I do. Do you remember when they – I had to look it up, actually. Do you remember when uh, do a Treehouse of Horror where they uh, they go to school, but they're in hell? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bar gets, goes to school in hell, yeah. Yeah, I think that's where it's from. Ah, okay, okay. They have uh, Maggie from the episode where uh, she's an alien, where she was conceived by with Marge and – I don't know if it was Kang or Kodos, but one of them. And she's holding Bobo. Or what looks... It's a teddy bear, so I'm just going to say it's Bobo. And one tentacle and uh, like a shaker. You know those shakers that babies have? They're like... Yeah, the rattles. Yeah, rattles. Yeah, that's... And Bart as uh, the fly. <laughs> well, this is a very heavy Jeff Goldblum episode, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, that one is probably, uh, does it look like the most normal, the least pop-like? Yes, because of the eyes. Yeah, because of the eyes, uh, yeah. And I and the big head. It has the, a big head anyway. The bigger head, yeah. Yeah. Now, I only see front shots of it, uh, so I don't know if in the back he's going to have uh, little wings. That would be nice. I'm sure it will. But these pops make me want to leave them in the box. And you know how I feel about leaving stuff in the box. <laughs> and also, I recently learned that there is going to be 
a vampire Mr. Burns, dude. And it's going to be a New York Comic Con exclusive. Is it the one where... uh... Which which one was that one? Early episodes, early Treehouse of Horror, where they go. Uh, he invites them to his house, and Bart hits that uh, that switch that says uh, "Happy Fun Slide." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's from that one. But uh, it's likely also going to be shared with Fye. So, I mean, of this whole set, I'm going to go after that one first. Where is, what what is the closest Fye to here? To us, to both of us, actually, it's uh, Woodfield Mall. Damn. Yeah, damn. And, you know, but see, well, I really want these pops. But then I, I get I get in that state of uh, that mindset that says, well, if I'm going to get these, then I might as well get the, uh, the office ones because I really like the office and I like the pops. So I'm scared. <laughs> I'm afraid, George. <laughs> I do not want to. Would go you down get that Seinfeld way. pops? I would go after the Seinfeld pops so hard. Did you see that there were these um? I forgot what they were called. Something like vinyl idols or something like that. Vinyl idols, yes. I, I, they're Seinfeld ones. Yeah. Did you get any of those? No. And the aftermarket price is probably too high. I'm assuming. I haven't looked it up since, but I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> because there probably are going to be. But yeah, so looking at those Simpsons, I was like, well, let me go check out some, uh, you know, Funko stuff. So there's some uh, items coming up from Funko. And I wrote down the pops that I like. Not necessarily I'm going to get, but that I looked at and thought, oh, that's nice. I'm going to I'm going to at least go to the stores and look at it and admire it. <laughs> so there's going to be a Jack Skellington from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas with his house. It's going to be one of those big sets. Uh, there's going to be a couple of more office figures are going to be released. Andy with his banjo and Golden Face Jim. Did you ever watch The Office? I watched like uh, first few seasons. Yeah. Oh, okay, so uh, do you remember that uh, that movie Michael Scott was writing? Michael Scarn? Uh, threat Level Midnight? That the employees found? No. Okay, well, he was writing a movie with himself as a hero, like a, like a James Bond type. And uh-huh. uh, the villain, uh, the villain's name is Golden Face. And <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. In the last Michael Scott season, the season before he left, they did this. Uh, you know, there was a, it was really Michael Scott heavy, the episodes. Like they were closing out the character's arc. Like uh-huh. giving us closure. There's an episode where he actually made the movie, and so they're watching it, and Jim plays Golden Face. <laughs> so there's a Golden Face pop? There's, yeah, there's a Golden Face pop. I gotta have that. <laughs> Do you know what that's a reference to? No, I've never seen any of the James Bond movies. Yeah, it's probably a reference to uh, Golden Eye or Goldfinger. A lot of uh, gold stuff. <laughs> Yes, he's he's got gold paints on his face. <laughs> There's a Walmart exclusive gold Luke Skywalker. Another Star Wars. Look at that. Go out and get you a gold Luke Skywalker. A box lunch exclusive purple flocked Scooby Doo. Uh, quick side note here on Scooby Doo. Have you seen those Walmart Scooby Doo figures? The two packs. It's come. It, it comes with Scooby Doo and uh, Pumpkinhead. Uh, it comes with Shaggy and uh, Frankenstein, and you know the other characters also come with another monster. They're six bucks each. Have you seen them? They're six bucks each. Yeah, they're six bucks. Well, not bad. Not bad at all. I'm gonna start buying them. So, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. I want to start buying those. So if you do see them. Uh, let me know. I'm going to start. I want the Shaggy with Frankenstein and Scooby-Doo with Pumpkin Face. Those are my top two priorities for that. Uh, back to the Pops. Target exclusive Batman. Double? They sell both? The a two pack for six bucks? Yes, the two packs are five oh, something. Damn. I was going to buy one the other day, but 
uh, you know, one thing led to another and I couldn't get it. Uh, Target exclusive Batman collector's box. I don't know what the collector's boxes are because I've never collected Funko, but I'm assuming it's like like Loot Crate. I'm assuming it's going to come with a bunch of Batman stuff and possibly a back Batman pop. Yeah, uh, it's like, uh, and it also comes with like a t-shirt and stuff, usually. Yeah, that's that's not for me. It looks nice, the pop, but no, it's it's not for me. Uh, a Chrome Joker that's going to be a Target exclusive that's been spotted in the Philippines, but we know that it's going to be a Target exclusive. Here's another one of those ad icons, uh, Chester Cheetah. I don't know if it's going to be flocked or not, but that would be pretty cool. Another Target exclusive. I'm going to get this one, but I'm going to get it to take to my job. It's going to be the Purple Chrome Prince, the artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of more here. Hot Topic exclusive. It Chapter 2 box. It's going to be releasing September 5th, so it's already out. Hot Topic exclusive, It Chapter 2. Don't miss our It Chapter 2 movie review coming very soon. (laughs) What is it going to be? When or what? No, no, what? The the thing, the Funko. Oh, I don't know. It's a box. It's an It Chapter 2 box. Oh, damn. I'm assuming it's going to have stuff. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's it, chapter two, and you know how I feel about Pennywise. And last thing, a Walgreens exclusive Herman Munster from the TV show The Munsters. So, damn you, Funko. I'm sure that they sat around. I just sent you a picture of a Funko pop that I think you might like. I know they sat around. In their uh, conference room, and they were they were they were thinking, how can we get Geo to start buying Funkos? <laughs> and I don't know how long it took them to come up with this, but they got me. Oh, this is nice. But this was it was this a Toys R Us? Yeah, it's a Toys R Us exclusive. And it came out at around the time. Oh, for people that don't know what he's talking about, I sent him a picture of a uh, of a Jeffrey from Toys R Us, the mascot. Yes. And uh, this was being released during the final days. It was going to be a Toys R Us exclusive. I never saw it. I never saw it either. And I I saw some people selling, you know, scalping the shit out of it on the internet. You know that if it came out around the time the stores were closing, people were buying these in bulk. Oh, man. Yeah, probably. (laughs) Now, now I really hope that when Toys R Us comes back, they start putting them back in their stores. So that yeah. people that bought a hundred or twenty or whatever of them and are trying to make a profit of them out of them get fucking. Oh, and and a few of these Funkos had a uh, had a golden ticket that if if you found it inside you uh, got a tour of the Funko factory. The one in what? Oh no no, I'm thinking about the store. I'm thinking I was gonna say the one in Washington, but no, that's that's the store. Do you know if this was flocked? If it was what? Flocked. What do, what does that mean? Flocked means that it's got like a texture to it. Oh oh. No, I don't know. It looks like it a little. Yeah, from the picture, it looks like it looks like it either was or had the potential to be. Yeah yeah. I like the way they spell Jeffrey. G e o f f r e y. Is that how you spell Jeffrey's name? No, for those of you that, for those of you listening out there that are wondering why I would spell Jeffrey's name, Jeffrey happens to be the name of my dog. No, I spell Jeffrey's name with a J. J E J E F F R E Y. Why didn't you spell it like this? <laughs> because it didn't occur to me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it didn't occur to me. And you know how my son's name starts with a J and my two nephews' names start with a J? Yeah. I figured I'd keep the tradition going. But uh, that's all I've got as far as Funko. Is there any anything else you want to talk about, George, before we 
we blow this candle out? No. Well, there's one more thing I want to mention. Uh, you know how I was talking about the Scooby-Doo figures, the two-packs? They scale with this line come that's come out by from NECA called the Toonie Terrors. They're made to look like uh, characters out of the Scooby-Doo cartoon, but it's movie characters, like the movie monsters. Uh, so far, it's uh, they have the 1990s Pennywise, and it comes with the red balloon. Oh, nice. Yeah. I didn't know that one. I, I knew uh, Freddy. Yeah, they've got no? the Freddy. Yeah, the Freddy, Freddy Krueger. Freddy comes with a uh, Freddy. Yeah, Jason comes with a machete. And they have another Pennywise from the movies, from the recent movies. And it comes with a red balloon and Georgie's boat. So I want to get... I am going hard on the hunt for these i'm hunting these down <laughs> and i want to scale i would, well they scale nicely with the scooby-doo figures and you know i'm working on a little display for halloween so i want to put those together uh they look really really interesting it's a cheap they're, they're 12.99 uh i've seen a couple of them at a target but i had a pass the, I had a, I passed on the bo- on both Pennywise, but I'm going hard after them now. <laughs> and with that, uh, we come to the conclusion of today's episode. If you enjoy what you heard, share it with your friends. If you want to contact us with any comments, questions, concerns, or you just want to vent how much you love the show, you can send us a tweet at two toy hunts that's at numeral two toy hunt if you want to do it through email you can email us at two toy hunt at gmail.com stop by our facebook page give us a like you can find episodes on youtube uh, google podcast spreaker spotify and now apple Podcasts. so uh for south side george i'm north south i'm north why do i always fuck up with this why can't I say North? You're, side you're North South Geo. I'm yes, yes. I can't decide. I'm <laughs> North Side Geo. Until next time, happy hunting. Mm-hmm.